Happy Monday and welcome back to the Front Porch. Time once more for another episode of Monday Meditations. Open your Bibles to James chapter 2. Today we're going to be meditating on James 2 verses 14 through 26 down through the end of that chapter. And this is a passage, this is a section of the scripture that emphasizes a way that we can know who we really are and who one another is. God knows us intimately, perfectly. He knows the number of hairs on our heads. He, he knows all things. Sometimes we lose sight of who we are. We don't take time to consider. We, we think we are this when we find out later we're something else. We think we're good and find out that we're doing wrong. We think we're doing wrong and find out we're doing right. There's a lot of things that get confused in this world. We look at the society around us and think if we're doing what everyone else is doing, then that has to be okay. We get caught up in culturalism, if you will, and, and find ourselves focused on things we ought not. But we can know a tree by the fruit that it bears. Jesus would say that, and that's in essence what James is talking about here. But he's using the reference of faith in that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11, verse 1. And without faith, it's impossible to please God, Hebrews 11, 6. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so when we seek after that wisdom, we seek after that faith, he's, he's going to make sure we find it. But faith comes by hearing the word of God. And then making application to that faith it really shows what we truly believe. Just to say one believes something but doesn't act, it, it's, it's folly. It's a, it's a deceiving of oneself. And so this is what James is going to be discussing in this latter part of chapter 2. So let's go ahead and dig in and meditate on this idea of faith being shown in the actions of that it bestows. Look at verse 14. It says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? It's one of those rhetorical questions that he's asking to begin. What's What benefit is there? What profit is there for a person to say he has faith but no action with that? I, I believe that, that that bridge will support me, but I won't get on that bridge. Well, you don't really believe that bridge will support you. There's no deeds behind it, no action. What profit is there in this? If a man says he has faith and doesn't have works, can that faith save him? Now, the word faith is used in different ways, biblically speaking. Sometimes faith is in reference to matters of opinion or scruples. You see that in Romans chapter 14. That's a faith he says to have to yourself. Don't, don't bind that faith on others. But the faith that we're talking about, the faith that comes by hearing the word of God, Romans 10, 17, the faith that was once and for all delivered, Jude 3, we're to earnestly contend for. It's a system. It's a, it's a plan that God has set forth. We read about it in his word. We read about who he is, what he did for us, and then we respond in kind. And so what he says is, can that faith save him? No, no. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we are his workmanship, Ephesians 2, verse 10, created unto good works. That's what genuine faith does. That's the genuine faith that will save. But this faith that he's talking about without action, it's implied in this rhetorical question, of course it can't save him. If a, and he illustrates it then in verse 15. He says, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What profit? What doth it profit? Where, where's the benefit in that? You see a person in need, and you just say to them, I wish you well, but you don't do anything for them. You haven't benefited them at all. Just words, just empty speeches. Love and faith are similar in this area. For a person to say that they love someone but they don't ever show it, it's just empty words. For a person to say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but they never follow him, they never do what he says, Jesus would say, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. It's empty words, it's useless, it's of no profit, it's no benefit. And this is what he's talking about here. Even so, verse 17, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. It's useless. It's, it's faith only is a very prominent doctrine among many religious people. But James, by inspiration, is making it very clear that that's a, that's a damnable doctrine of the devil. He sold a lot of people a bill of goods. They just believes all you got to do. And he said it's, that's a dead faith. It's a useless faith. It's, it's alone. 
dead in this context is going to denote the idea of separation. It's separated from profit. It's separated from benefit. It's separated from salvation. It's separated from anything good, a faith that doesn't act. It's not trying to earn salvation. That's, that's where the misconception comes. No, we're not trying to merit or, or earn our salvation and working our way to heaven. That's not the idea. This is a faith that acts. It's a faith that acts because it's faith. It's genuine faith. I believe that Jesus is the creator. He is the son of God. And what he did for me, I'm, I'm compelled, as it were, to say, if I believe that, I'm going to do whatever he says. I'm going to be his follower. You remember that Jesus would say in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Who will then, Jesus? He that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Because that's what genuine faith does. He goes on and illustrates it even more. He says in verse 18, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You'll see what I genuinely believe. Many people are professing themselves to be Christian, but they won't, they won't worship him regularly. They profess themselves to be Christians, but they won't deny themselves the physical sinful pleasures of this world. Many profess themselves to be Christians, but they talk like the world, dress like the world, act like the world. Well, what are they then? A Christian? No, they're the world. We're not to love the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Faith says, I can't live that way. Faith says sinful practices hurt God. And this person says, I have faith and I have works or whatever. You show me your faith without your works. You can't prove that. You can't be acceptable to God in this. And you can't prove that you have faith to anyone around if you're not walking in his light, if you're not doing his will. Verse 19, he says, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. You believe there's one God? That's great. But you're in a company with some others. He says the devils also believe and tremble. In many cases, those devils that he's talking about, with that trembling aspect, they believe in God far more than many professing to walk this earth, saying we're a Christian, we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, we believe there's one God. But if you're not walking in the light, if you're not being faithful to him and keeping his commandments, you're in the same category with the devils. Matter of fact, the devils have a stronger faith than, than many Christians, quote unquote, they have a faith that moves them to tremble in fear. And maybe, maybe we have, have listened to the lies of the devil and sold ourselves a bill of goods. He says, you believe there's one God. That, that's great. That's wonderful. Don't forget the devils believe and tremble, but they're not saved. Faith without works is dead. Being alone, again, verse 17. But then he says, verse 20, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? He illustrates it with, a, with an Old Testament example, Abraham. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? What good would it have done for Abraham to say, God, I believe you, when God said, sacrifice thy son, take thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, and offer him as a burnt offering unto me? What if he said, oh, yes, yes, God, I believe you, I will do what you say, but then didn't get up and do that? Did he earn... Uh, his title as the father of faith he was simply doing what was required because he truly believed God he trusted by faith Hebrews 11 he trusted that God would raise him from the dead he had no example of that that's a genuine faith that he was willing to draw that knife he was willing to take his son's life because God told him to of course God stopped him he didn't allow him to and as Abraham would say to Isaac, his son, when he asked, Father, here's the wood, here's the altar, where's the, where's the sacrifice God will provide? And he did. He provided a sacrifice for each one of us, for all of mankind, his son, Jesus the Christ. But he offered by faith, by faith, he offered his son in his mind, though he didn't physically take his life, God stopped him in his mind. He had already done that in obedience to Almighty God. And James says by inspiration, he was justified by works. It proved his faith. Seest thou, verse 22, how faith wrought with his works, and by works his faith was made perfect. A completing aspect of that. It's a completion to our faith to do what God says. Same is true with love. If you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus would say. If we're not keeping his commandments, we don't love him. If we love him, we don't keep his commandments, we don't love him. It's, it's very clear when you look at it 
logically, not emotionally. Moving on, then he says, verse 23, The scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. That's what it's about. I'll be a friend to Jesus. My life for him I'll spend. I'll be a friend to Jesus until my years shall end. That song that we sometimes sing, that hymn, emphasizes that this love that we're supposed to have for him is tied to a self-sacrifice. Romans 12, 1 and 2, presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. You see then, verse 24, how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. The only time that faith only appears in the scripture is in a negative sense. And so many religious people have have based their eternity on a false narrative that faith only is all that matters. It's not biblical. It's not what the scriptures teach. And God is imploring us to see reality that faith without works is dead. Likewise, also another illustration, verse 25, Was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? Her actions that she believed, we've heard of you, we've heard your God fights for you, and we were afraid. That's what all of Jericho felt. But this, this harlot, that's what the scripture calls her, that's what she was at one point. She trusted enough to do something with that faith. And then he says, as he closes chapter 2, For as the body without the spirit is dead, even so faith without works is dead also. It's useless. It has no benefit. When our spirit leaves our body, this, this physical body is going to do nothing but decay, return to the earth as it was. The spirit returns to God who gave it. But what are we doing with our lives now? Are we showing God that we truly believe by the actions that we we do with our hands, we do with our words, we do with our feet. Where, where we go, we say, like the old song when maybe you remember singing sometimes at, at vacation Bible school or something. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see, ears, what you hear, mouth, what you say, hands, what you do, feet, where you go. Why? Because the Father up above, he's looking down in love. So take care with that. Be careful what we do because faith matters. Without it, we can't please God. But faith without works is just as dead as no faith at all. Do you have faith that Jesus is the Son of God? Are you proving that with the actions and the way you live? He's still calling on all who will come unto him to have life. He will make that available to you. Hearing the word that, and, and that produces this faith that we need to follow him in his footsteps to do what he said to do. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. That's the saving faith because it's going to be an active faith because that faith moves us to realize that repentance is commanded by all of us as well. Acts 17, verse 30. The times of this ignorance God winked at but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. He's appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness and he's going to judge by that man, Jesus. And did, did he have just a, a faith only lifestyle? No, he did everything right. He did everything that pleased the Father. Are we following in his footsteps? Repent of your sins. Confess what you believe. Confess with your mouth. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Where the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And be baptized into Christ that's Romans 6, 3, and 4. Baptized into his death for the remission of your sins. Acts 2, verse 38. And be raised to walk in a newness of life. That's what genuine faith will do. That's a faith that's active, a faith that's effective. But faith without works, it's always going to be dead being alone. Don't have a dead faith. Have a living, active faith. And if we can help in any way, let us know what we can do. And that's something on which we can meditate this Monday and every day. May God bless you till we meet again. Mm -hmm.